Got it. We good to go? All righty. Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to another live Q&A with yours truly, Sam Healy. Uh, we are uh, co-streaming at the same time on both Twitch and YouTube. So if you're joining us from Twitch, uh, we will, I'll pull some questions from there uh, every once in a while. Every once in a while, I'll bounce over there and answer a few questions and I'll back uh, bounce back to YouTube and, and continue answering questions there in the uh, chats. So uh, I'll try to include you guys on Twitch as much as I possibly can. Uh, and then of course, uh, we'll be pulling from YouTube as well. So uh, without that, thank you for joining us. I certainly appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to answer uh, to ask me some questions so that I can answer them but on top of that we're going to have an overarching theme that was kind of brought to my attention from a comment that was made on one of my vlog videos that I was making during the Gamma and uh, MeepleCon uh, trip that we took uh, last week and uh, the, the quote and I think it was meant as a as a as a compliment and I appreciate that but the quote was simply this by one of the commenters it looks like Sam is better with the real people than with the industry suits. Uh, so uh, I guess I, I was a little bit more relaxed, I guess is what they were trying to say with the real people that I was playing games with at MeepleCon than I was with <clears throat> the uh, professionals, I guess you could say, the industry people that I was uh, talking to at Gamma. So that's going to be kind of the overarching thing that we have and so uh, we'll be you can chime in with that and uh, I'll try to take a look at both of the chats and see what you guys are saying and share that uh, because it might be somebody from Twitch saying something it might be somebody from YouTube saying something so that everybody can be kind of on the same page uh, so let me explain a little bit further here my take I guess you could say on this supposed difference between real people and industry people um, because I think it is simply a perception and I, I really think that there's actually no difference at all between people who are real and people who are industry people. Now I think probably the idea behind that statement or comment is simply that there is a perceived difference from how industry people act and how real people act. Or maybe they were meaning that there is simply a difference between how I was acting between industry people and real people. Either way, there is a perceived difference there. So I, I, guess, I guess we'll get into it. I think it is just a perception. I don't think there's a difference between industry people and real people if we're just kind of being on a, on a general level. Now, if you go a little bit deeper, I guess industry people have a little bit more knowledge of the industry, generally speaking. I know there can be differences and uh, ex exclusions to that statement or examples where it might not be true on an individual basis. But I think on a general basis, I think industry people have more knowledge of what's going on in the industry. Um, and uh, then, then the, again, <laughs> real people, I hate using that because industry people are real people too. Um, there just might be a, a difference in perception of, of how they're acting, so to speak, or, or, and again, it's just a perception. I think that um, now it may be that there's a difference between how I was acting and how uh, at Gamma and how I was at on the videos and how I was acting at MeebleCon on the videos. And I think part of that is simply due to the idea that um, uh, um, I have a, not really a deeper relationship, but a, a broader relationship with, with some of these industry people. Um, and, and I count some of them as friends. It's not that I'm not friendly with those people that I'm playing games with at MeepleCon because I, I, I hope I was and I think I was. Um, but um, there, there's just a difference there, I think. Uh, so 
I don't know. Uh, another person here uh, says, Trevin, uh, Trevin Taylor. Okay. He says, but isn't perception reality? And, and really, no, it isn't. I don't think it is at all. Sometimes it isn't because you could perceive something to be a reality when it, when it is actually, when actually the absolute opposite is actually the reality. Um, for example, you could perceive that somebody is lying to you, but they could be telling you the absolute honest truth, but you perceive that they're lying to you. So is that perception a reality? No, it isn't. It's, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's not reality. It's, it's the opposite of reality. Um, is it now you could say, but the perception is my reality because that's what I perceive. So it's my reality. Well, that's, uh, I, I would have odds with that argument because then there's a difference between your reality and my reality. Um, and I don't, I don't know that that's absolutely true. Reality is simply that which is real. Um, experience can be different, yes, but reality isn't. Uh, but our perception of reality can change. But that doesn't mean that perception is reality. Just how we view reality is different. So I don't know. Now, I didn't go to school for any of this. And I'm not saying that uh, because of that, what I think is any less valid or because of that, whatever you, th you say is less valid. I'm just saying I didn't study any of this. It's just what I'm saying from my experience. So anyway, let's get to some of the things that you guys have been saying because I've been blathering on for, for quite, a, quite a long time. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> okay, one person asked this. Chaz mentioned the Mr. Potato game. Curious what you thought about that, Sam. Is it, It's a game where you use real potatoes and add plastic arms, legs, weapons, etc. to them. Yes, I did see this, and I think it's an interesting idea. I did not play the game, so I don't know if it's a good game or not. But I think it's interesting that, that uh, they are basically selling you a game that you can use with the potatoes that you have in your own home. So you just run over to the fridge or the pantry wherever you keep your potatoes and you you grab a potato and you bring it to the table and you start adding all of these different appendages and weapons and uh, tank treads or, or whatever to your potato and that becomes your miniature in the game i just think that's a really neat idea i don't know if the game is any good i did send mark street over to them to see if because uh, they're launching a kickstarter for this um for all of the different things that come in the game uh later on this year and and uh I, he, he was interested in having Mark do a Kickstarter preview for us. So maybe that'll work out and we'll see what the game's like when Mark does his preview or when somebody else does their preview and uh, we'll see. But it was intriguing. I thought it was uh, hilarious and I, I, uh, it, it was also kind of ingenious as well. I like the fact that you're using a real potato <laughs> uh, to play this game. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Still waiting for the Dice Tower end to start. Yes, that's true. Sorry. All right. Can Blood Rage, <clears throat> excuse me. Can Blood Rage be played solo? Uh, I don't think so. There aren't rules for it that I know of. I'm sure there is some fan-made you know, version of solo variant uh, that somebody can do it. And I guess you could try to do that, but just... Get some more people together and play Blood Rage. Don't try to do it by yourself. Um, uh, I am doing good, Jay. Nice to see you. Thank you. And uh, Jay, I just want to point out real quick. Jay, check it out. Boom! Yeah, we've had that around the studio for a while. Jay is going to know what we're talking about. It's something that uh, we'll reveal here in the next couple of weeks, I think. We're almost done with this project, and uh, so we'll see what happens. But uh, Jay's helping me with something, and uh, Nick Murphy has helped me a little bit with it as well. And uh, one of Jay's friends, I don't know his name, otherwise I would say it. Uh, but uh, we're working on something kind of uh, just smashing our heads together and, and uh, trying to come up with something pretty cool. So hopefully we'll be able to reset pretty soon. Um, Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. How do you feel when you hear that the USAopoly person says that she's excited that they are using Harry Potter, Harry Potter movie screenshots for all of their Harry Potter IP games? 
I don't have a problem with screenshots on on cards and and inside games. I mean, uh, I BSG one of my favorite games. Uh, screenshots, uh, Star Wars uh, CCG from Decipher, one of my favorite CCGs ever. Also screenshots. I don't mind screenshots uh, at all, really. Um, Firefly the the board game also has screenshots as well. So. I don't mind screenshots. There are some people who do. And again, I think that it can be done in a poor way. It can be poorly designed, but I don't think that's the screenshot's fault. I think that's the graphic designer of the game and it's their fault for not finding a better way to incorporate those screenshots. So I don't really have a problem with screenshots at all. And I think if, if somebody else really likes them and she's really excited about having screenshots in a game, more power to her. I don't have any problem with that at all. But um, it's not for everybody, and I get that. But at the same time, I don't have a problem with it. So I think it's cool. Uh, what stood out the most to you at Meeple, Con, or Gamma? Oh, wow. Gamma was such a whirlwind because we had a lot of problems with our flights. And so we were come, we, our, our flight into uh, Reno uh, was delayed in Vegas. We flew from Fort Lauderdale to Vegas and then from Vegas to Reno. And our flight was delayed at Vegas going to Reno. We didn't get into our rooms until I think it was 2.30 in the morning. And then we had just uh, about eight hours to get some rest and and uh, take a shower and, and breakfast before we got back up and, and started doing interviews right off the bat there um, on uh, Monday. So, and then we, we did Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at Gamma, and then we left Thursday afternoon right after lunch, and our flight from Reno to Vegas was further delayed, and we didn't get back to our, we didn't get to our hotel room in Vegas until about two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Um, so it was a tiring trip because we were dealing with delayed flights, getting in very early in the morning, uh, and jet lagging, uh, which, you know, three hours really shouldn't make that big of a difference, but it did, especially getting in so late on the night before. So it was really kind of a whirlwind, um, all together. Um, I think that just a couple of the things that stood out for me, I like uh, Dust USA is doing a lot of cool things with Dust 1947. They are bringing out a lot of changes. And I mentioned this on one of the vlogs uh, in the talk that I had with uh, Gregory before the actual interview. And it's also covered on the interview, so you can watch that when it's posted as well. But uh, they're doing a lot of... Um, uh, they're, they're making a lot of changes to their company, not necessarily the game and how they, um, what the prices that they charge and, and how, uh, you can get into the game and different base sets and different army sets and different cores and that type of thing. And there's just a lot of things that they're doing that I really like about, uh, Dust USA right now. And I think that's good. That stood out to me a lot. They've, they're coming out with a whole line of things this year. And uh, he made the joke on my vlog that he said that last year was the biggest year for Dust USA. And uh, he said this year is going to make last year look like nothing. <laughs> so that was a pretty cool thing because uh, I really like that that system, first of all. And I also like the, the genre that's around that system, kind of that uh, sci-fi-ish, um, uh, World War II-ish kind of Tannhauser, Tannhauser, sorry, uh, theme that is wrapped around it with the supernatural and all this other kind of stuff. Though I, I like that uh, game, uh, so that that stood out. There was a another game that the theme is not really is not really hitting me very well, but there the the production level and what looks like probably the gameplay is looks looks haven't played it yet, but it looks interesting. It's a game called Court of the Dead. Um, and it's uh, built upon an IP that has been in graphic novels for some time now, and they've acquired the IP, and they're going to be doing that. And that looks cool. Um, uh, that, that was a standout for the production quality of it alone. So that looks interesting. Um, 
Yellow has a Viking themed game coming out. It's coming called Raids, which looks interesting, which has a mechanic in it that uh, I really like. It's one of those things where you have almost, almost, not really, but it's kind of the whole board is like almost like a rondelle where you can stop anywhere, but you can't go backwards. And I like that mechanism because it makes you think about what you really want to stop at uh, because you won't be able to go backwards. So I like that. That looks interesting. I'm interested to uh, give that one a try as soon as possible. So those were some of the things that kind of stood out to me. Um, um, I was able to uh, uh, talk to uh, John Carter a little bit from Games Workshop, and uh, he was able to pass on a, a few little exclusive things that they're going to have coming out later on for uh, a couple of games, and, and that's it's always good to see John Carter from, from Games Workshop. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get an interview with him. Uh, our timings just didn't match up very well, and, and um, uh, us media types weren't able to go in there uh, to the exhibitor hall and record or interview people. Um, so, uh, you know, there, there's that. So uh, those are the three or four things that, that kind of stood out to be a Gamma. Uh, let's jump over to Twitch here. Let's see what uh, Twitch is doing here. Um, well, I don't see anything in the chats. Uh, no rooms. Uh, I have to create a room? Does that? Oh. Uh, well, okay. I have no idea how to use Twitch, so I'm I'm sorry. This is something new to us. So, um, looks like there are five people watching us on Twitch right now. Can you guys post something uh, in that chat, stream chat, and uh, see what happens? Um, and we'll come back to that in just a little bit. All right, let's see here. So let's uh, continue down. Uh, let's see. Was the beta for Zombicide Invader at Gamma? No, it was not. Uh, we uh, I, I talked to them um, a little bit, but not much. Um, but, you know, it, it looks very cool. Uh, thank you uh, for saying the vlog was superb. I... I <laughs> I don't agree with that. The audio was, was pretty rough uh, because we were out in the hallway. Uh, it was just an idea that I had that I would grab people in the hallway before they came in uh, or basically right before they were going to do their interview with us uh, that was going to be recorded. I would take them out and just give a little brief interview out there. Eh. Probably if, if we had like a green room or something like that and not in the hallway because, I mean, there were like maids going by and people walking by and people leaving the room it was i don't know i guess it made for a lot of interesting cameos but uh uh not not really much past that uh, i am glad that you enjoyed it and i do appreciate you saying so but uh, it could have been done better and i probably will do it better last year i was also using one of the a new camera that we had purchased for that specific purpose, but it just turns out that the camera isn't very good uh, at capturing audio, and we don't have anything. We do have things that will capture audio for us in cameras, but they don't work with that specific model, so that's why I didn't use it. So it's not that I was um, <clears throat> ignorant of what was going on. I was just trying to work with what I had, and it turns out that my phone was actually better because I used my phone for uh, MeepleCon and uh, it was actually much better at capturing audio than, than the camera was. So there it is. Uh, let's see here. I see. Uh, okay, so this is uh, on topic. Kabuki Kid says, thank you for, for being one of our uh, moderators, by the way, Kabuki. We appreciate it. Uh, let's see. She says that uh, I think the meaning of real people is that they have no ulterior motives, that they, that they aren't there to sell or promote. Okay, I can see that. Um, but more often than not, especially with, with uh, the, the, the conversations that I had with people, I was just interested in their product, so it was me asking them so that they could share what they were sh going to share with us anyway with you guys in a more candid way, I guess you can say, in a more casual way. That's what I was doing, and, and I get that, though, that uh, people aren't trying to sell you anything, so that might be the difference between industry people and real people. Um, so, okay, I can, I can see that. Um, 
Another person says, I see where the person is coming from, but industry suits are there for business and only way Dice Tower or other media gets any of their time is being a bit more professional, is by being a bit more professional. Okay, I can see that uh, as well, that there's, and again, there's that ulterior motive. See, whenever I say ulterior motive, it usually has a negative connotation, at least in my mind, that uh, you're, you're, you're showing me one face and, and yet, there's another face behind that one, and that's what you're really here for, but you're trying to, you know, it reminds me of uh, uh, Hamlet's uh, line to Ophelia, where God hath given you one face, and yet you make for yourselves another. And then he follows on later on with the, get thee to a nunnery, where he's, you know, he's tired of that idea happening in the thing. So I don't... I, I, I hate, I, I really don't want to say that they have an ulterior motive. I mean, they, their motive is to let you know what they're releasing this year so that they will sell more. So that's fine. I, I understand that. So I, don't, I just don't know if that's a bad thing. I just don't know if that's a bad thing. I think it's just a, a common thing. It's, it's what's uh, supposed to be there. Um. Let's see. Industry suit can also mean that they're purely a corporate suit and doesn't even use their own products. That I know isn't true for many of the people that we talked about. Um, uh, I, I, I like, for example, I know Gregory plays Dust 1947 with his family uh, and his wife. I know that uh, um, uh, uh, the guys from Yellow, Stefan and uh, Cameron, uh, they were also at MeepleCon, and after they closed their booth down, they didn't go back to their rooms. They went to the hall, and they were playing games with people. So, and it wasn't just their games; they were playing all kinds of different games. So, it, I, I, I don't think that's the case. We have a, a sh not strange, but we have an interesting difference in this industry that I'm seeing, at least I think, and I don't know uh, about others, but um, other industries that is, but uh, uh, I, most of the people that I run into and uh, a lot of the people that, that we have a very good relationship with, they're gamers and they're also industry professionals. So I don't know that that's a difference. Um, it might be, per again, it might be a perceived difference, but I don't think that's a real difference. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Let's not, let's not get too philosophical here. This is true. I do not want to do that. Um, uh, Kabuki actually said this and, and, um, perception does matter. And then she also said this, if everyone perceives something a certain way, that is what matters most. And, and I would disagree with that, Kabuki. And the reason I would disagree with it is because what if that perception is a false perception? What if it is absolutely not true? And if everybody believes it, and so groupthink takes over and says that's true, when it actually isn't true, that's a problem. And, and I get that it matters because you need to right that wrong, so to speak, but um, I, I don't, I mean, it, it matters, yes, but at the same time, it is still a falsity if it is, you know, and, and a lot of people will perceive something as truth when actually it isn't. And so that's, that's where I really struggle with, with giving perception more credibility. Uh, if people perceive something to be true when it isn't, yes, it matters and we need to address that misperception and get it fixed, but it doesn't make it right. All right. So uh, that's, that's the uh, thing that I have with uh, this whole idea of, of perception and it being reality or, or not. Is it, <laughs> is it safe to eat the potatoes after playing the potato game? Yes, I, I think it probably is. I mean, you're going to cook it, probably going to kill any germs that, uh, or, or what have you. I don't think that the, the, the pieces are going to degrade or biodegrade or whatever it is inside the potato. So, um, yes, you could actually cook your mech. Now, you probably want to remove its weaponry and, and mode of transportation before you do that, but... Uh, there you go. Thank you. I, uh, uh, Garrett, you, you say that my beard looks nice. Thank you. I'm actually uh, super not pleased with it. I'm, I'm thinking about going and get it, getting it 
uh, trimmed up by a barber. Um, not absolutely chopped up because I do want to continue growing it, but uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> the Brothers Murph R1 unit, yes, but uh, I, I was able to hook up with Nick a little bit more often with, at MeepleCon, and uh, he is actually an artist. Now, that'll give you a little bit of a spoiler as to what we were talking about earlier uh, as to what kind of project we're working on, but uh, he's the one that uh, I was, I was uh, talking with the most. But yes, the Brothers Grimm do seem to be joined at the hip uh, more often than not. Um, let's see. Screenshots are a total boo for me. Again, like I said, different strokes to different folks. Uh, let's see. Hi, Sam. Have you heard about the Samurai Jack board game and Street Fighter the Miniatures game? Thoughts? We actually did see uh, a, a prototype version of the Samurai, Samurai Jack board game. Uh, so, yeah, it did look interesting. I remember watching it back when my kids were, were small. I don't watch it now. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I, I watch very little cable TV, I guess you could say. So uh, I spend most of my, if I'm going to watch cable TV, it's usually going to be like hockey or the Olympics. I spend a lot of time watching the Olympics, but because um, my the Winter Olympics are, are, are my favorite. But uh, <clears throat> there is that. Uh, which team will you support on the World Cup now that USA is not participating? Probably... Uh, England. Uh, that's the one I, I usually default to. Um, so I don't know if Ireland made it. I would I would root, I would cheer for Ireland too, if they're in it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Do you think that Battlestar Galactica should be reprinted, either the IP bought by another company or simply put back into the market as is or given a second edition or neither and remain a classic? Um, you know, it, it's really hard to, I don't know that Battlestar Galactica would do that great now. I still think it's a great game, but I think a lot of the hype that it received was on the tail end of the, the popularity of the TV series. And with that TV series kind of being out of the limelight now, I'm, I don't know that it would have as much hype going into it. Uh, Re-theming it to something else with a different IP or a different theme or what have you, I don't know. Um, one of the things about Battlestar Galactica is that it fits that theme so well. Uh, the and, and it's one of the things that I like about it. The mechanisms of the game really lend itself toward the theme and back and forth. So, or vice versa, rather. So, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Just downloaded Memoir 44 Campaign Book 1. Can I play it with just the base game? I think so. Uh, I haven't looked at my campaign book in a long time. Um, but I think so. And even if even if you don't have the exact models, you can usually use proxies and stuff like that. And, you know, this model stands for this or what have you. So I think so. Um, oh, it's the headphones over there. I'm hearing an echo. That's why I did that. I'm hearing an echo and it's the headphones over there. Uh, okay, so no worries. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what are your thoughts on Cry Havoc? It's my most recent pickup, but I have yet to get it to the table. Uh, I really enjoy Cry Havoc. I'm not a not a huge fan of its combat system, but I don't I don't not enjoy it. That's horrible English, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's not that I dislike it, so to speak, that much, but I'm, I, I just wish they had done something else with it. But I'm okay with it, but I would have rather they used something else. But uh, the game on a whole, I really like it. I love its asymmetry. Um, uh, I like the models. They are not overwrought, um, uh, but they are also fun to paint. Um, so yeah, I, I like Cry Havoc. I'm, I think you'll be pleased with the purchase. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back over to Twitch. Still no comments. 16 people watching though. Um, so, okay. <laughs> um, we'll just continue here with uh, what we got on uh, the Dice Tower um, live, live chat here. Okay. Uh, what's the name of our Twitch channel? They have put it further down. Uh, it is uh, www.twitch.tv twitch forward slash the Dice Tower. So there you go. 
Um, our thoughts, my thoughts on Seventh Continent. Um, I, I like it, but again, I've only played it once. Uh, so I don't really have a lot of deep thoughts about that because it, it, I just haven't, I don't have that much experience with the game. But um, it was fun when I played it the first time. Al Williams says all people are quote unquote real people. This is true. And that's kind of what I was trying to say earlier, that there, there are only perceived differences between one side or the other. Um, Let's see, Nathan, I'd be interested to hear the perspective of some of the store owners and what they're thinking about as they evaluate whether to pick up a game or not. Okay, and then uh, Trevor, uh, Trevin did say uh, later on that Tom interviewed uh, Gary from Black Diamond Games, and um, that's actually, that was actually my local store when I lived in California. I lived in uh, Martinez, and, and he is in... Um, Concord, Concord, California, which is just kind of, they're all the same thing, just a, a, a line on a map somewhere divides them. So, yeah, that's, that's cool. Garrett says, asks, where is my biggest scar? My biggest scar is, is on my right uh, leg down by my ankle and and it goes up my calf i broke my my uh, the tibia the small bone in my leg i think it was nine centimeters above my ankle uh, when i was playing softball for my church back in texas oh goodness way back when uh we're talking like 19 i want to say 1993 1994 something like that and um and uh, they put a, a, a steel plate and uh, nine, nine screws in my leg, and it's still all in there. Um, so that's, that's my largest scar. I also have a scar right here, which was given to be my, my dog, uh, Lucky. <laughs> that's ironic. Um, uh, it was a Dalmatian that we had when I was in um, kindergarten, first grade, and uh, I was leaning up uh, against the side of our garage just kind of taking a rest in the middle of the day and for some reason she she came and put both of you know her two front legs on one side and her two back legs on another and i was like what in the, what in the world <laughs> so i kind of pushed her to make her move and she didn't move uh, and i tried that a couple times and she just didn't want to move for one reason or another so i tried to get scoot out from underneath and uh when i came up the other side she <laughs> took it took a chunk out of my face so uh had to go in and get it sewed up, so that's another uh, uh, scar right there. But the, definitely the largest one is on my on my leg. Uh, let's see here. You can say something. Here's another aspect to our, our larger discussion of, about this real people and perception and, and all this other kind of stuff. It says you can say something realistic to a friend and something realistic to an employer or coworkers, and they probably won't produce the same response. Huh? That's interesting. Um, huh, I, I don't know that I've ever, well, yeah, I guess I, there is a difference there, I guess, because you can, but I guess that, that lends itself to a discussion on what would be appropriate. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever said something that would be appropriate in both of those arenas and produced a different response. I, I know that you can do something that would be considered inappropriate uh, in one or both of those arenas and you would get a different response. I have experienced that before. So <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that might bleed a little bit too much into a different kind of discussion as far as this, uh, rather than this thing about um, you know, perception between real people and industry people. Um, Kaz, yes, that is correct. Uh, I do like that. The first to plead his case seems right until another comes comes by and examines him. So that's true. Um, people can say something and give a certain kind of perception or, or paint something in a certain kind of light, uh, but then somebody else comes along and says, you know what, that's not exactly correct. So, yeah, that's very cool. Um, 
you are painting with broad strokes. Some things are true only based on what people perceive. Huh. <laughs> um, Al, uh, I think that might identify a large difference in my worldview and yours. And I, not, not that one is wrong and the other is right. That's not what I'm saying at all, but I think that's just my, that might be a difference. Um, um, just because I perceive something to be true, it doesn't mean that it is true. It could be true, and my perception could be correct, but my perception could also be false. So my perception is not truth. It could be, but it is not true. Um, yeah. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to get too far into this. Again, we're, we're talking about this idea between real people and industry people and, and the perception that they are different. But again, as I said earlier, the, the perception might be that I acted differently with one than the other. And, and if that's the case, I apologize because I really strive not to do that. Um, I try to be the same person no matter who I'm talking to. Uh, because I think that's important uh, to, to, not be, to not treat one person differently than another. I really think that's important. So if that is what this person was perceiving, then I, I do sincerely apologize for that because that was not my uh, intent at all. Um, but again, I might act differently with one group of people because I know them more or better than the other people that I meet at uh, a convention. So again, it's... I know it's not, it, I, I'm not trying to reach a tried and true answer here. I, let me say that. I just think it's an interesting discussion to have. Um, <laughs> uh, Kaz also says that, uh, and, and Kaz is right, he has a, he has a, a manly beard, uh, definite beard envy there. But um, he says, I need to trim it myself, save the money. I would want to do that. Yes. Um, he says he does it with scissors and a trimmer all the time. Yeah. See, I've, I've tried this before and, and I do trim right here. I do trim here to try to keep it shorter. Um, but when it gets down to this, I get really kind of uh, antsy because I don't want to mess it up and I don't want to cut it too short. So I don't know. I haven't really made the decision whether or not. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Brothers Grimm. <laughs> Brothers Grimm. Yeah, I actually did call them that when I first saw them in Meeple, uh, at MeepleCon. I called them Brothers Grimm, and, and it's just, it was just a slip of the tongue because uh, Brothers Grimm is one of my favorite movies, and that's what I think about every single time I, I hear the Brothers Murph. So unless I make a very concerted, conscious effort to say the Brothers Murph, then I, it will just come out Brothers Grimm because that's what I'm thinking every time I, I, I think of them too. Um, let's see here. Continuing on. Serious note, have you heard of Horus Heresy Legions? It's an app similar to Hearthstone, but in the 40K universe. I have not. I'm, I'm really on the outside looking in as far as game apps are concerned, uh, just because I don't spend a whole lot of time doing them. I actually tried one a, a couple of weeks ago, and it's, it's one of those... I don't even know what it's called, but it's an online thing where you have a city and you're building up the city and the defenses and there's other people you can join alliances and people can attack your city and you have to defend it and all this other kind of stuff. And I just got tired of it because uh, there was like a couple of days where um, I, I didn't have the time to, to play the game a little bit and, and touch base with my alliance and all this kind of stuff. And they kicked me out of the alliance and then they had people attack my city that were in the alliance. And so that was, that was the final straw. I was tired of that. But that's why I just don't play online games. There's too many people out there playing online games and you don't know any of them. So there's no personal connection. So they just treat you as a bot and I don't like that. So I, I usually don't play apps a whole lot. Um, just because I just don't have the time to do them and, and I don't want to put a whole lot of money in them either. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Uh, why do you include setup time when talking about HeroScape? You don't include terrain building uh, in game time for Warhammer. Should it be shouldn't it be set up before players arrive, like an appointment game? Uh, that's a good that's a good point, a valid as well. Uh, but I dare say that uh, setting up terrain in a Warhammer 40k is vastly quicker than setting up a terrain for HeroScape because you literally have to build the terrain in in uh, HeroScape, whereas with 40K, you're just putting it on the board in, in whatever configuration you and your opponent agree upon. And it and it's really, it's pretty quick comparatively. So I don't, <clears throat> I don't think that there is a, uh, enough of a similarity between those two examples uh, to really warrant an argument because I think they're just too, too different. Uh, all right, TJ Norton says, suits, quote unquote, filter their conversations through the standards and policies based on their job. Real people are driven by their emotions and passions just the way it is. I would disagree with that as well. I mean, I see what you're saying, and I think that that can be true on an individual basis, but to apply that to the whole, I think, is a fallacy because I know a lot of people in the industry that are very passionate about the work that they do, and they are very emotive about, or <laughs> their emotions are very uh, heightened when they're talking about this and that and, and this in the industry and, and this game over there that's being produced by one of their quote unquote rivals in the industry. So I think that, um, again, that, that might be true on an individual basis, but to apply that moniker to everybody is not, not okay. Uh, because then you're just dealing in a um, a kind of prejudice, and, and I'm not saying that to 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 make then the the equation that you're that that's a bigoted statement. That's not what I'm saying at all. But there is a little bit of prejudging going on there before the person has given you anything to judge at all. So uh, I would be careful with that kind of thing. Uh, what do you think about GKR after the playthrough? Well, I haven't been able to play it again, but I really did enjoy the playthrough. I liked everything about the game. I like its simplicity. I like its uh, campy, kind of hammy nature with the uh, different cards and the, the flavor text that are on them as being read as an announcer saying, hey, and this, this hit is brought to you by such and such. And I really enjoyed everything about that game. And, and so I want to play it again uh, to see if that is either confirmed or uh, um, uh, put down a little bit, but I did enjoy the live play and uh, hopefully be able to get it again. Uh, is this a new camera? The video quality looks better today. No, it's not a new camera. Um, I think they may have switched this camera with one in the other studio or something to that effect. So I don't think it's a new, it, it's, it's not a different camera. I'll put it that way. It's just a, another one of the same thing that we had in another studio, I think, possibly, maybe. I don't know for sure. Isethel, I'm excited for you guys to add Twitch. We are too. We're still baby stepping it though. But uh, he says, I can't wait to sub once you are partnered and can accept them. That way I don't have to remember to donate. Yeah, I understand that. So uh, what we're, we are working towards that end. There's still a lot of things that we have to learn about Twitch and hopefully we'll be able to do that in the near future. Uh, how do I acquire most of the games in my collection? It, it's a smattering of different ways. I buy some. Um, I uh, keep some after I re after we review the game. So there, some of them have been review copies, and uh, other games I've I've gotten for free in, in other ways or for you know a vast discounted price from like a ding and dent sale or or something like that. I have some that we found at um, garage sales and and uh, like Goodwill stores and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's just a smattering, but I, I, I would probably say the, the I don't even know if it's a majority. I would say probably it's 50-50 things that I've purchased and things that I've, I've just kept for review uh, in a general way. And then, you know, very small percentages with uh, uh, garage sales and Goodwill stores and that type of stuff. So um, some of them I've, I've, you know, at going to conventions, you get free stuff. You know, you get swag bags from, from conventions for a number of different ways. You know, I've gotten some from BGGCon. Um, 
uh, we just went to MeepleCon and and uh, Yellow was giving away copies of Titanium Wars, so uh, that's in my collection right now. I don't know if it's going to stay. I haven't played it, so we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Perception is valuable. If your boss perceives you are doing a poor job and you truly aren't, it sort of doesn't matter. Um, you get canned anyway. Uh, true. Uh, however, uh, that, again, in that specific instance, that is a misperception. And uh, I would say you then, if, if your boss fires you because he thinks you're doing a bad job when you actually aren't, you have a bad boss. Um, because your boss should know of for a fact that you are doing a poor job or for a fact that you are doing a good job. And um, there's a number of different ways that uh, they can misjudge uh, your work performance, um, whether it is having a different rubric that they're going by that you don't know about, uh, or you know just, just not on the same page, so to speak. Maybe it's not your immediate boss, but it's somebody higher up that gives you the can because, well, yeah, they're not doing anything. But your supervisor is like, no, they actually are doing very good. And so yeah, I, think, I think that's a, I understand what you're saying, Kabuki, but I think that's a, a, actually an example of how perception can be wrong. And does it matter? Well, yeah, it matters, especially to the person who got canned, but it was still a wrong perception. It was not truth. So um, perception uh, is not always reality. Perception is not always true. Uh, do you guys still do Dice Steeple? Is there a place where I can submit a subje subject for discussion? Yeah, just email me at uh, sam at uh, dicetower.com and uh, just put in the subject heading Dice Steeple Subject uh, or possible Dice Steeple Subject or something to that effect. And uh, Dan and I have a, a, um, a Google document that we, we share that, that where we have all of our, our uh, sub possible subjects listed. So we, and we talk about that from time to time. But are we still doing it? Yes, we, as a matter of fact, just last night, we recorded another episode um, <clears throat> with uh, Patrick uh, Lysite. He is uh, the uh, he is a, a game designer and uh, owner of uh, Kara Games that published uh, a few different games now, um, one of which is a, a very good game, Commissioned. He's also done a couple of other small ones, called uh, one called Unauthorized, which is a kind of... Um, oh, goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. It, it's a social deduction game. Uh, where you all have different roles and, and, and there's teams involved. So, um, yeah. Anyway, they've done that one. They've done another one called Three Seats that I wasn't real savvy on. Um, just a little bit too basic and uh, that way. But they're, they have another game on Kickstarter right now called Soul of the Empire. It's an asymmetric strategy game that uh, takes about two hours. So uh, variable player powers, variable win conditions. Uh, so it sounds really good. I haven't played it yet. Dan has. He did a preview video for it as well. So uh, we talked about that for a little bit in the first 10, uh, 10 to 12 minutes of the, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the time that we spent last night. And then the rest of the time we were talking about um, uh, a minute to learn, lifetime to master. That was the general idea of the thing. So I think you'll enjoy that episode. Be, be on the lookout for it. It should come out probably by the weekend. I would imagine Dan's pretty fast about turning those around and editing wise. So um, be, be on the lookout for that. <clears throat> uh, Twitch has a lot of comments. I don't see any of them. Again, this is just uh, no rooms yet, stream chat. I, I have no idea what I'm doing over here. So maybe um, I am just not doing this correct. Maybe if I pop out chat. No, that doesn't help. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this, but it says the Dice Tower hasn't created any rooms yet. I didn't know you had to create rooms. Why can't you just... I don't get it. There are no feed posts. Oh, wait, there's uh, testing. Oh, I would personally love that. I don't know what's going on. But hello, hello. 
again, I, I don't um, use stream chat. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. I apologize. Well, again, this we're baby stepping it, right? We're growing pains, so I apologize. But uh, we'll try to we'll try to get it fixed. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Looks like somebody fell on their keyboard or was really cussing up a storm. CMH boy. I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah, there's a bunch of gobbledygook there. Hopefully he's okay. Uh, there's definitely a connotation that goes to calling someone a suit. That is correct. And that was what I was trying to get at. That's really at the core. Is there a difference between suits and real people? Are suits not real people? And again, what does real people mean? Um, because we all kind of have our own motives, right? So if, if having an ulterior motive means that you're acting like a suit, then, well, we all kind of have that. But then at the same time, if, if we don't have an ulterior motive, then does that make us real people? I don't know. I mean, I just, I just, it's really weird. Uh, is Batman worth backing? Well, that depends on what your definition of worth is. If you can afford it and it's a game that you think you will like, then yes, it's worth backing. Um, if you already have Conan, is it worth backing? Again, I don't know because can you afford it? If you can't afford it, no, it's not worth backing. Uh, if you're going to like, for example, I know this is an, ex an extreme, but if you're going to you know, keep food from reaching your family's table so that you can have another per uh, purchase another game, then no, it's not worth it. Extreme example, I get it. But at the same time, I hope you get what I'm saying. If you, you have to answer that question, not me. Uh, did, did I enjoy the game? Yeah. Do I like the fact that it's, it's Batman and that it's, it handles that theme well? Yeah. Um, is it better than Conan? I don't know. Uh, I think it's very similar. Uh, and I think it, it suffers where Conan suffered a little bit. I think it suffers from the same things in part. But, uh, but I, I think they've done a good job with it. I think they've produced a good Batman miniatures game. So with with interesting modern mechanisms that are in it. So, uh, but again, is it worth backing? Is is a personal decision that you have to make? I can't answer that question for you. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Thoughts on the new Clank Mummy expansion? Well. Uh, this goes back to uh, the original Clank, the adventure deck building game, not uh, Clank in Space. It does not use any of the same mechanisms from Clank in Space that I know of. I know that there are some modular ex parts of that expansion, I think, and we didn't use those. And, but I don't think that they, they have any kind of uh, correlation to Clank in Space. I think this is just an expansion for the original Clank. So with that, I still like Clank in Space better because of, the, of how they deal with that idea of somebody just running in, grabbing something and running out, and then really putting the screws to everybody. Uh, I think Mummy, the Mummy expansion suffers from that, uh, just as it did in the original, in my opinion. Uh, when we played it, uh, that is actually what happened. I was, the, I was the first one to get out. Tom was actually the first one to start um, rolling those extra or pulling those extra cubes from the bag because he died um, through a, <laughs> a course of very unfortunate and probably poor choices that he made v very deep in the pyramid. Um, so, uh, but I mean, I did not go as deep as I possibly could. I went pretty shallow. 
into the pyramid and I got back out as fast as I could and I won the game. Um, and I don't know that that always is true. If Tom had not died, he would have beat me in straight points. But the fact is, is that he went too deep and he tried to do too much and he died. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I still like Clank in Space more, but I did enjoy myself. I think Clank is a great system uh, and it's fun. Uh, it just has that one little thing that's kind of a tidbit for me. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Top 10 games for romantic dates. Uh, I don't know. Let's see, to me, playing a game, a board game, isn't really romantic. Um, it's fun, and it's something that friends should do, but I don't know that it is a romantic thing to do. So I, I probably wouldn't be good for that kind of top 10 list. Um, uh, I'm reading, I'm sorry, I don't read fast, <laughs> sorry. TJ Norton says, response, I'm not speaking to the whole, he's going back to this idea of, that, that I said of, of applying what might be true on the individual to uh, the group of in board game industry people as a whole. So he says this, he says that I'm not speaking to the whole, I'm speaking circumstantially, which is why there is a stereotype in the first place, just making sure that people understand uh, the stereotype. That, okay, uh, there is a stereotype, but again, I don't think stereotypes are things that uh, we should be uh, doing, because that is exactly what a stereotype is. It's when people take one instance and apply it to a whole group of people. That's what a stereotype is. And so that's also not okay. Stereotypes are not okay to deal with, at least not in my opinion. Um, I mean, when, when, people, when people find out that I was born in Texas, that I spent the majority of my, my childhood in the South, and that I'm a Christian, they will have some, they will stereotype me a certain way without ever even getting to know me. And that's not okay. That's not cool. That's, um, that's unfortunate. And, and really, you can plug in any different kinds of, of types of people in that equation, and you're still going to come away with the same answer. It's not cool. It's not okay to do that. Will you be right sometimes? Sure, you, you could be, but you won't be right all the time, and that's why it's not okay. You have to give, you have to give people a chance, you know? Um, yeah. So I get what you're saying, TJ, and, and I don't mean to be focusing on you specifically. It just kind of worked out that way. But I hope you understand. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm respectfully just saying that I'm, I guess I'm just not okay with, with uh, this whole idea of um, of of taking our circumstantial experiences and and applying them to a ge more general conversation. Um, where it might be true, it won't always be true. And, and to, to say that people are a certain way based upon our experiences, that's, that's kind of unfair to them. So I hope that, that I'm, I'm speaking, TJ, to, uh, and I'm staying on track. I don't, I don't think I've, I've been off. Let's see here. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit more. Kabuki says, perception is definitely not always reality, which is why it is powerful and sometimes dangerous. Yes, that is correct. Uh, who is my favorite Norse mythology character? Huh. You know, I don't think I have one, but I mean, I could say Thor, but that would be just because he's a Marvel superhero. <laughs> um, uh, but I guess, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've always kind of like axes and hammers as uh, weapons and like fantasy games and stuff like that and, and, and Thor having a lightning charged hammer or his command over lightning I think that's cool so yeah I guess I'll be cheesy and just say Thor mm, let's see uh, no he says I'm making my own uh, syntax AI says hey Sam I'm making my own tabletop RPG any advice you can give me no there is no advice I can give you I have never even thought about doing something like that so um, good luck I uh, hope you do, hope you do well let's see 
<laughs> uh, we went a little hog wild. The whole card says we went a little hog wild at PAX Unplugged, but we could still pay rent that month, so everything was fine. Yeah, they're talking about that, what I said earlier about, you know, whether you can afford a game or not, uh, whether it makes it worthy. So, okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's continue down. Could you do a basics of painting video? Hmm. I can email you some issues I ran into that I wish you and Rob had covered. Okay, um, please do that. Go ahead and email me, sam at dicetower.com, and uh, I'll take a look at that and then put some more thought into it. I guess me and um, uh, I, I could do that, or, or if, if I can get uh, Rob and I back together, or uh, Vernon, uh, and any combination of the three of us would be able to probably help you on that. I know that Vernon and I have a little bit of a different idea on what basics of painting means. So it might be better. Rob and I are a little bit more uh, eye to eye as far as that's concerned on what basics of painting could be considered. Um, so it might be better to have two differing opinions so that you can get kind of two sides of that same coin. But uh, send me the email first and uh, we'll, we'll work on it from the other side of that. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Trevin says, um, I have a game called An Enchanted Evening, a romantic game for two. It's terrible. <laughs> okay, well, um, I, I just, man, playing a, playing a board game just isn't romantic to me, I guess. Um, uh, uh, Eric Bird and I have no idea. He says, will raising the tariffs on Chinese products cause the price of board games to increase since so many are made in China? Maybe. I don't know. I am not, I am by far not an economist. Um, Jason says, to me, a suit is someone who looks at people as consumers only and doesn't remember what it was like to be on the other end of the situation. A real person has that in mind when making game decisions. All right, I can see that. Um, but, uh, again, going back to my, uh, my, my vlogs where this, this idea kind of took root, uh, the people that I was speaking with are very much not like that. So again, calling them suits was a, a misnomer uh, because they, they, they are not what people commonly think of as suits. They were, I mean, based upon your thing here, um, they are, uh, they don't look at people as consumers only. They, they are more, uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, they have to, I mean, that's their job, right? Part of it, but they are, they are also very conscious about what it's like to be on the other side of that equation. Um, and again, I can't say for all of them because I don't know all of the people that we spoke to at Gamma uh, on, a, on a more personal level, but the ones that I do, I can say that, that uh, for the most part at least, um, based on my experiences with them, they, they are very down to earth people and, and they do have a perception of um, both sides of that equation, and they, they, they work very hard to uh, strive to be um, uh, balanced in their approach. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Christopher. I appreciate your kind words. Um, I appreciate your input. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Okay, Trevin says, and, and I'll go ahead and just go here. Texas and South, you can't control. Actually, you can. You can choose to live in the South or not live in the South. You can choose to live in Texas or not in Texas. Now, I can't choose where I was born. So, yeah, I get that. But Christian is the label that you've chosen to identify with. That is true. I have. And I will continue. It isn't fair to have preconceived notions. Uh, isn't it fair to have preconceived notions about a label that you choose? Um, I would assume you believe in, in, in Jesus. Yes, I do. And I willfully will take on those preconceived notions. But that doesn't mean it's okay to have preconceived notions. Um, just because that some people 
have been dealt with by the group, so to speak, called Christianity in a certain way, it does not mean that I am going to deal with them that same way. And so them assuming that I am just like everybody else they've ever met that was also a Christian is, is not cool. Um, it's not okay. We don't think it's okay in any other type of situation. For example, and I'm just going to go to the absolute uh, extreme where people usually just say, boom, the conversation's over because I don't really want to harp on this. But if I, I can't, it's not okay for me to say, oh, you're a German, so then you must also be a Nazi. That's not okay. It's never okay in other groups of people, so why is it okay with other certain groups of people? I, I, I just don't follow that. And yes, I did choose that as something that I identify with. It is. And I will absolutely have dialogue with people who do have those preconceived notions because I want to kind of combat that preconceived notion that they have because in many cases it's not true with me. So that's one of the reasons why Dan and I are doing the Dice Table the way we are right now, because we want to reopen those lines of dialogue between differing worldviews. They've just been shut down because of these preconceived notions that just aren't cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, let's move on. Um, let's see here. What is your favorite standee from a game? Um, I, I really like the Chieftain from Stone Age because he's just like like chilling in his chair. Um, I like that one a lot. Uh, but I like Sparky from Dead of Winter too. Uh, let's see here. Have I backed anything on Kickstarter this year so far? No, I've not. And I've said this before. Um, I, I don't really have the disposable income. Um, well, I don't have enough disposable income to feel comfortable backing some of these games that I would want to back. Because the ones that I would want to back are the ones that, that would cost like three, four hundred dollars to get, you know, everything, or you know, one hundred and fifty dollars to get just the basic stuff. And I, I just, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So uh, apologies. Oh, let's see here. Um, da -da -da -da. Let's see here. All right. Well, we are at an hour and 10. Well, maybe a little bit less than that because we started late. But let's go ahead and say, uh, let's go ahead and do that lightning round phase, y'all, where you give me two things. And I've got to choose one. And uh, I'll do my best to choose one. Um, but if I don't want to choose one, I won't. I'll just choose none or both. So those are the options that I have, one or the other, both or none. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that lightning round for the next uh, 10 minutes. And uh, then we'll be done. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to recollect live chat here on my little Excel spreadsheet. And then we'll see what's going on. <clears throat> uh, let's see. While we're waiting uh, for more to come in, uh, thank you for the live, ch uh, live chat. Uh, th thank you, Peter, for saying that. I appreciate it. Uh, World Recipe of Life, thank you. Uh, TJ Norton, uh, all right, cool. Just drawing attention to the preconceived notions. All right, cool, that's fine. Uh, Trevin says, I see what you're saying, but if every Christian is completely different with different ideas and values, doesn't that render the label meaningless? No, 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 no. I didn't say that we were completely different. All right. Um, there may be a lot of similarities, but the preconceived notions are not necessarily true. And the only way you'll find out that they're true is by opening dialogue with that person and getting to know them. And the problem with preconceived notions is the fact that they keep you from getting to know people. You don't try to find out if their preconceived notions are right or wrong. You just assume that they are right and write that person off. And that's what I don't like about it, Trevin. So, uh, again, I'm respectfully uh, arguing with you, I guess. Um, and, I, and I certainly don't mean to be heavy-handed, but uh, it's something that I really feel strongly about. Uh, so uh, I, I simply do not mean to be disrespectful because I, I do respect your opinion on what you're saying. However, um, I, I, I really kind of disagree with it as well. 
well. All right, let's go. Let's go ahead and get to uh, some lightning round. Here we go. Beef jerky or dried sausage? I'm going to go with beef jerky. I, I like juicy sausage a lot better. Um, dried sausage is just kind of ugh. Um, so yeah, beef jerky definitely. Uh, DC deck building game or Justice League Dawn of Heroes? Well, I have not yet played Justice League Dawn of Heroes, so I don't know yet, but I have played DC deck building game, so I'm going to say Justice League Dawn of Heroes. <laughs> and yes, I do know what that means. Uh, waffles or pickles? Huh? Um, I'm going to say waffles, just because I like waffles. It has little grooves and cups that hold the... Oh, it's just so good. Heavy Euro games versus eating sardines. I would play a heavy Euro game versus eating sardines any day of the week. Uh, let's see. Silverback gorilla versus a lion in a fight. A silverback gorilla or a lion versus a fight. Well, uh, um, I'm going to go with the gorilla. I'm going to go with the gorilla. Robin or Batgirl? Uh, I'm not really a DC fan, so I don't really care either uh, or neither. Uh, spicy or sweet? Um, that depends. Uh, so I, I like both. Just depends on, uh, I mean, you got to give more. You're talking about desserts. You're talking about uh, main courses. You talk about appetizers, uh, snacks, whatever. There's, there's so many different things. So I like spicy and sweet. It just depends on the context, whatever it might be. Shade Spire or Frost Grave? Um, I'm going to go with Shade Spire. Uh, Justice League, the movie, or Batman versus Superman, the movie? Uh, I enjoy Justice League a lot better than Batman v Superman, uh, so I'll go with Justice League. Head hair or facial hair? Obviously. Uh, I'm going to go with facial hair. Peanuts or peanut butter? I like both. Uh, I really like boiled peanuts, um, especially if they've been boiled with Cajun, uh, you know, Cajun boiled peanuts. Whoa, those are amazing. Um, but peanut butter is also uh, my spread of choice. Um, when uh, putting it on a sandwich. And peanut butter on a hamburger is the bomb. If you haven't tried it, don't knock it. Just try it. You'll love it. Standees or meeples? I would much prefer meeples. Um, but standees are okay. Just depends on, like, for example, Dead of Winter. Great standees. Um, but would it would have been better with meeples? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think the, the zombies could definitely be meeples in, uh, in uh, Dead of Winter with the uh, characters being miniatures. <laughs> Deluxe edition! Uh, let's see. Fog of War Fog of Love? Uh, neither. I haven't played either, so I'm going to say neither of them. Uh, let's see here. Abstract Games. Uh, black or white? Hmm. Neither one, because I usually don't like black abstract games, and if the abstract game has only black or white pieces, I'm not really interested in it. So, Yeah. Uh, and again, I do not answer Tom or Z ever. So not going to do it again. Hanamikoji or Onitama? Ah, uh, I like them both. I probably like Hanamikoji better, um, but they're both great games, and I like them a lot. Plastic or wood? Again, it depends on the on the game, um, but um, we, you know. You could almost say miniatures or meeples here. So uh, I, would, I would probably say plastic. Uh, let's see here. Imperial Assault or Legion? Uh, right now, currently, I'm still leaning the Imperial Assault way um, because I, I just can't, I can't, I don't have the time to afford getting into an, uh, another uh, tabletop miniatures game. I uh, just can't do it. I have barely have time for the ones that I do play right now, and I really don't usually play them, so uh, I have to be very picky. Um, Logan movie or original Iron Man? Uh, original Iron Man. I was not a big fan of the Logan movie. I thought it was a little bit too gritty, a little bit too visceral. So, yeah. Uh, original Iron Man. Jason or a turkey sandwich? <laughs> now, that's going back a few years. That's cool. Um, I'll take Jason. No, Jason's a cool kid. Uh, he's actually older than I am so I can't call him a cool kid he's a cool cat there you go uh, Batman or Superman uh, neither uh, I'm not a DC fan I'm a Marvel fan uh, but between those two I like Superman better uh, let's see uh, scissors or versus exacto knife well exacto knife is definitely um, sharper uh, but scissors can do a good job too. ti3 or ti4 definitely ti4 
Uh, Pepsi or cola? Hmm. Uh, I, I guess you mean Coca-Cola. Uh, and if that's the case, I definitely like Coca-Cola over Pepsi. Uh, Coke Zero or rather zero calorie Coke or no sugar Coke, whatever they call it now. That's my favorite uh, if I'm doing that. But cherry Coke Zero is the best. Uh, craft paint or hobby paint? Whatever you can afford, Vernon. Uh, Eagles versus Hawks. Uh, well, if you're talking about the Chicago Blackhawks versus the Pittsburgh, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, then I'm going to go with the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, let's see, X-Men or X-Force? You know what? I really enjoyed X-Force. That was the one comic uh, series that I, I really uh, collected the most, and I really enjoyed them. So we'll go with X-Force, although Wolverine is probably my favorite X-Men. So uh, I don't want to leave him out in the... Uh, uh, in, in the cold. Proverbs or James, both great books. Um, I, I, I like Proverbs a lot, but I like James too. I probably have to go with Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs a day, man. Uh, let's see, 878 Vikings or Blood Rage. Blood Rage is, my, is, is the game that I like the most, but I really love the historical and mythological flair that uh, 878 Vikings has to it. So I like them both. They're great games, but Blood Rage is still number one. Uh, beard or no beard? Hello. Um, uh, Thor Ragnarok or Black Panther? Ooh, I like them both equally for different reasons. Uh, I loved the comedic, uh, ro frolicking, romping time that uh, Thor Ragnarok was, but I liked Black Panther for its um, drama, I guess you could see, and action sequences. So there you have that. Vegas or Reno? We, I think oh, as a whole, as a group, we liked Reno better. Um, but at the same time, I, I know uh, Kenny, he's sitting in the room right now, uh, about ready to shut down the thing. He wanted to get to see Vegas in the strip. I don't know. Did you get to see Vegas? No, I didn't. You didn't, you didn't get to go? So uh, next year, sorry. Uh, he wanted, he's never been to Vegas before, so he wanted to see the strip and, and uh, he, he wasn't able to get there. But uh, he wants next year. Galaga or Dig Dug? Galaga, by a long mile. Uh, Keaton or Bale? Ooh, wow, that's a cool, that's a cool, I have to go with Christian Bale. I think he was a better Batman uh, and Bruce Wayne collectively. I think Keaton was a better Bruce Wayne and less as good as a Batman, but we'll see. I mean, that's just my, my thing. Ledger or Nicholson? Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, I, hmm, I know Ledger is the popular one, but uh, Heath did a really good job, and he was a phenomenal actor, but Jack Nicholson's Joker was, was amazing. Um, so I'm, I'm going with that one. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Sam or Samuel, whichever you prefer, really. Um, if you call me Samuel, I will look for my grandmother because she's the only one that really called me Samuel, or I will think that I'm in trouble because that's the only time I got called Samuel when I was a kid is when I was uh, uh, in trouble or I had done something I hadn't done, wasn't supposed to do or, and I got caught or what have you. So either one will work. Uh, but uh, if you call me Sam, you'll probably uh, get a, a less dramatic reaction. Um, Let's see here. Um, well, I think that's about it. Han or Chewy? Never. I will never choose between Han or Chewy. Um, they are they are my favorite duo. Uh, let's see. Linda Carter or Gal Gadot? Um, or Gadot. I, don't, I can't, don't know how you pronounce her last name. Um, I would... Godot really did a good job playing uh, Wonder Woman, uh, but that's not to take away from anything that Linda Carter did. Uh, so I think they were, they were both great. Let's see here. Um, yeah. Feel, feel, feel free to... Uh, give the band hammer to uh, Hans there. Anyway, yeah, Thor's band hammer. Uh, 
All right. Well, that's about it. We're going to go ahead and close this down. I do sincerely appreciate you guys joining me today because I love these discussions. And I think we're going to continue doing these, uh, you know, uh, overarching theme on these as well, because I think that helps spur a conversation a little bit more. Always come back with uh, questions that you want to have asked because we will always do that as well. But um, uh, I think it's a good addition to have that uh, overarching theme to each of these things. So we'll keep doing that. Thanks so much for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, us, I am alone. Uh, actually, I'm not alone. Kenny's in the room right now, so I'm, almost, I'm still okay saying us, but uh, that was a misspeak. Well, we are about to head out, uh, Kenny and I, that is, uh, go back to the other part of the studio where the rest of our work is happening. But thank you for joining us. We'll see you later on on the flip side. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.